Hey, how's it going guys? In today's video, I'm going to be taking you through a Blitz game that I played literally like 20 minutes ago, um, which we have the A3 Sicilian. Um, I get a lot of views on the videos where I'm either playing like the Kara Khan or the A3 Sicilian. Um, so maybe you guys really enjoy it. Maybe a lot of you are actually playing it, but I don't know about that because like my opponents never really know what to do against it, as you'll see in this video, in this um, game. Like, a lot of opponents are really kind of clueless. Quickly, before we get into the rest of the game, drop a like and subscribe if you enjoy. Um, yeah, that's about it. And we have E6. So, the moves that you kind of like to see, or that I like to see in this position, are Knight C6 and D6. Reason being, after knight c6, we can successfully gambit this pawn. We can bait the knight to the b4 square, force it back, and take a massive center for the cost of one pawn, right? e6 accomplishes effectively the same goal because it opens the bishop up. The bishop is not on b8. Um, g8, sorry. <laughs> um, so it opens the bishop up so that, again, we can sack this pawn, and we've, we've only lost A and B pawns. Like, our opponents lost a C pawn, which is more valuable. The A pawn being gone is kind of useful for us anyway, because it just opens the rook up. And in the same vein as this scenario, where the knight is forced back, the bishop is forced back, we take the massive center. Our opponent plays knight to f6, and I go bishop to d3. The computer calls it an inaccuracy because it wants e5, knight d5, knight f3. But after d6, our opponent gets to like get rid of our e5 pawn, which is doing a great job at controlling f6, which can set up future attacks on the king side by controlling any knight or bishop move to f6 to try and defend the king. So I prefer bishop d3 because it leaves the option of e5 open at all times. And if our opponent plays d5, which is just straight up a mistake, and I've got to say, I probably face d5 against this structure probably like 70%, maybe even more of the games that I play where I take this massive center. My opponent will play d5, e5, knight to d7 and there's no real way to get rid of my e5 pawn because after queen g4 there is no bishop f6 defending g7 there is no knight f6 where after queen takes g7 you can have rook g8 defended by the knight to boot the queen and win the g2 pawn there's none of that because the e5 pawn controls f6 so effectively and so my opponent plays king f8, which is the best move, defending g7. g6 is a possibility, but after bishop h6, this is miserable. Because I may be threatening bishop g7 to force the rook to move and stop my opponent from castling. Also, you can't castle through a check. And if bishop f8 is played to try and challenge the bishop, you can take. But personally... A lot of the time, I will just retreat the bishop. And if bishop g7, throw an h-pawn forward. Maybe h5, bring the queen back. Look for potential sacrifices. Bring the knight in. Maybe even castle and play f4, f5. It's, um, it's a very nice position. And if you keep an eye on the eval bar throughout this game, a lot of the time we're like plus 0 point something. But remember, we are down a pawn. So positionally, we are ahead like 1.5 or something because you got a minus the one for the pawn that we sacrificed. So, you know, that's um, it's pretty substantial. It's a pretty substantial positional advantage, mainly just because it is pawn. After knight f3, which I think the computer wants queen g3 or something. Knight f3 can't be a bad move. Um, Black would love to play a move like f6 to try and 
challenge my e5 pawn. But in a lot of cases, I can kind of just ignore it, I believe. And if he takes, then I just maintain this. And the f file is now open. And you could argue the king is weaker than it was with the f pawn on the board. And I mean, losing this d pawn isn't the end of the world because its main function was just to protect e5 anyway. So our opponent just goes knight c6. This knight is kind of useless because our pawns kind of stop it from going anywhere. It'd love to rotate from e7 to the king's side. But it's, it's again, not, not very easy. Because where are you going to put this bishop? So I just castle. We have queen e8, which was just a really odd move. My thinking was that maybe he was preparing something like bishop d8 and f6, so that e6 would be protected by the queen, because my queen is attacking it, but strange move. I find the best move, knight a3. My opponent can't really take, because I'm going to take with the bishop. King is going to g8, and I mean, this is... This is an absolutely godly bishop, especially because these pawns help control a lot of the dark squares so that it can't be challenged. I could maybe even just throw it into d6, and how are you going to kick it out? Like, this is annoying. Obviously, it's not the best move, but like, just for the sake of argument. So, a6 is played, which... I mean, you assume it intends to stop a piece from going to b5, but of course I can still do that, because taking it would lose a rook. And here I should have played knight b5, because one of the problems of moving the queen to e8 is that knight c7 now comes with a fork. And if you move the queen back to d8, you're effectively admitting defeat, because bishop a3 and something is coming to the d6 square. If you take the knight, then bishop takes c7 comes with check, and the rook is falling. So, I, I, I should have found knight b5. I had sort of the right idea with bishop g5, realizing that my bishop and knight can both access the dark squares, whereas only his bishop is really capable of defending them. But he takes the knight, and after rook takes, Knight b6. Um, I, I, I play knight d2. The computer gives this as a miss. but And it says it's plus 0.3. But in the eval it says it's plus 1.6. So. You know. You know. you know, Who knows. But regardless of the evaluation. It's obvious. Whose position is easier to play here. The reason I played knight d2 was because I thought knight c4 was black's only form of activity. And knight c4 now loses because my knight rotating back now defends c4, and it's coming to d6, okay? Knight d2 also facilitates the movement of the f-pawn up the board, which is going to be the main way that I break through the position, because all of these three pieces are going to be helping control the f5 square, and if you can force the file open, our opponent's king is going to be struggling, right? So bishop d7 develops a bishop, obviously. I go f4. Again, computer calls it a miss and gives plus 0.2. But then in the evaluation that you can't see, it gives it plus 1.1. So we're going to ignore that. Then we have g6. Which, I mean, it stops f5. But bishop h6, king g8, f5 might be technically playable. Technically, you can play it because there's a pin. But the queen is then going to come here, and you've got to trade queens. And obviously, even though we're still better, why? Why would we want to trade queens? And the reason we're better is because this king is going to struggle to get out. And if the king can't get out, then the rook can't get out. And if my bishop can keep a rook at bay, that's three points, three, po bleh, three points of material, keeping five points of material inactive. So, I play rook b3, attacking the knight. 
because there's no good way to defend the knight. And if queen d8, g, d8 is played, and bishop g5 attacks the queen, the queen has to go to c7, and then bishop f6 picks up the rook. So, my opponent retreats to knight, gives me the b7 pawn, and plays rook a7. I was very tempted here to either double up, which the computer really likes, or retreat my rook and go, what is your rook doing on a7, mate? But I got a little bit greedy. I mean, it's still completely winning. I thought, oh, I can just win a pawn. And now I'm actually up a pawn because I already won the b7 pawn when I skewered the knight and the pawn, right? So now I'm up a pawn with a completely commanding position, and all I've got to do from here is convert it. So we have knight c8, bishop b7. Bishop b7 just puts pressure on the knight, but the idea is rook a1, rook a8, because I figured the, the king is stuck on the back rank. This rook can't help defend the back rank. So if I can get my rook there, then he's going to have to keep at least one of these pieces on the back rank, supported by the queen, and he, he's just going to run out of resources at some point. I can maybe sneak in like this eventually as well. So knight b6 is played, rook b1. Because if I go to a1 now, then the knight actually controls that square. So I need to start with rook b1. I think the computer here wanted me to trade and play queen h4, trying to get to f6. And after knight d7, defending there, play rook b1. And if my opponent does nothing for the sake of argument, okay, then we come to e7. To be fair, there's, black has no moves. I say my opponent just does nothing, but like, he's got to do something. The knight can't move, because the knight controls f6. The king and the rook can't move, because of the bishop. This pawn can't move. These pawns all can't, like, just literally can't move. This pawn is going to get taken. This pawn is going to get taken. If the queen moves, as we've established, my queen comes to e7. So I guess he can only really move the bishop. And then the computer just wants me to... Go rook a1? Well, no, can't go there. Rook a7. Oh, and it's looking for this. Well, I did not see that. I thought, okay, let's attack the knight. And attack the knight again. And I don't care about c3. Because I'm going to a8. My opponent here had knight e7. Which I expected. So that his knight was defended. And he could bring a knight to f5. And here. Queen g5. Knight f5. c4. I guess these pieces are kind of tied down, and this knight can't really move because my rook might come to a1. If he takes, then then e4 is cleared up, and I'm going to f6, and it's game over. So okay, it's 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 still prob well, it's still with everything is winning really, just mainly because of this. Like his king just cannot move, and f6 never works trying to break out so knight takes c3 rook a8 like i said quite a few moves ago this was my plan which forces a knight to d8 but just bishop g5 which is an inaccuracy because he can't defend the knight and his best move, his best move is h6 but this is obviously game over i'm up a queen and I'm still going to mate him at some point anyway. So maybe this has encouraged you to um, actually give this opening a go. And if you do, 
fancy learning this opening you can learn it by yourself of course but i would recommend the gotham course um it doesn't cover everything a lot of it you do have to learn yourself i don't play it exactly how we recommend because i really like this structure like this is how i like to play it which i think he recommends keeping the pawn on e4 and trading but it's not really in my style of play i just love an e5 pawn against this french style structure so that's just me i'd recommend looking into the line though because the win rates on it are insane like if you check opening explorer i'll check it now actually like this position No, not master games. Can I just do? I can do my games. No, I can't. Okay, I'll have a look at another video when I inevitably play this again. But I know I have a great win rate in this sort of structure, in this Sicilian gambit style opening. So I'd recommend looking into it. I've got plenty of other videos on my channel in this opening, so please give them a watch. If you want to learn a bit more about the opening. And um, with that said guys. If you stay till the end. Thank you very much. And I'll see you in the next one.